this is testing. This is actually chapter 5. Uh, uh, we know that we have gone through a few chapters which is measure of central tendency, measure of dispersion. That is actually all the measures that we use in order for us to describe our data. Okay, so um, what I can say is what we have um, the previous topic that we have is more to the part of descriptive statistics. So this is going to be a new part which is uh, what we call as inferential statistics. Okay, so what is inferential statistics? Okay, what is inferential statistics? Inferential statistics is when we are using what we have for the sample data in order for us to conclude about the population parameters. Okay, for example, let us look at this one. This is all the notation that we have for the sample. These are what we call as sample statistics. Okay, the first one is X bar. And this X bar is actually the mean for sample. Okay, and this is going to be the population mean. Okay, so in this topic, we'll be learning on how to estimate the population parameter by using the sample statistics. Okay, so the first one will be related to X bar, which is the mean for sample, to estimate the population mu, which is population mean, right? And the second one is sample stat standard deviation to estimate the population standard deviation. Right, and the last one, which is uh, this, is something new. Uh, it is not actually a new knowledge to you. Uh, I believe that you already know what is proportion. Okay, so we'll be learning uh, about how to estimate the pi value, which is the proportion for population by using p hat, which is the sample proportion. All right. We are going to cover the second part of this uh, lesson, which is about estimation just now. Okay? Just now we said that we are going to estimate all the population parameters, all these population parameters, by using the sample value or the sample statistics that we have. Okay, so now, for the part of estimation, we know that topic given the, the name of estimation and hypothesis uh, testing, hypothesis testing. Estimation and hypothesis testing. So we'll be covering the uh, covering the first part, which is about the estimation now. Okay, and for the part of estimation, we have two uh, different estimates that we can do. One is what we call as point estimate. The other one is what we call as interval estimate. Okay. So for the part of point estimate, this is actually what you have done for the assignment that we have done for the previous weeks. Okay. For the part of point estimate, we can actually just use whatever that we have from the measure of uh, central tendency or measure of dispersion that we have learned in order for us to assume that that will be the same for the whole population. Okay, So that is what we call as point estimate. For example, let's say we are talking about average or the mean. Okay, um, Let's say I'm actually I'm trying to explain about my class members okay from uh, the previous test I can see that uh, on average my students get 90% for the first test okay so I'm going to conclude that uh, all the students of semester 2 uh, DIE are having the same average of 90% okay so that is what we call as point estimate by using the exactly the same value of sample statistics I just conclude that the population have the same value that is again we refer to the point the word point estimate meaning one point to estimate the population value okay but it is going to be uh, not very accurate because uh, if my sample is just coming from my class, okay, how can I actually be so sure that uh, the whole DRE students uh, of semester 2 taking the same subject getting the average of 90% uh, marks, okay? So in order for us to have a better estimate, so what we are going to learn uh, in the first part of the topic would be something what we call as 
interval estimates. Okay, so what is interval estimate? Okay, just now, we are going to say, uh, we, we know that we have learned the part of interval estimate. Okay, so what is interval estimate? Just now, we try to differentiate between point estimate and interval estimate. Okay, I said that we, are can, we cannot be so sure with the point estimate that we have already uh, do for the first part of our uh, assignment, which is about uh, more to the part of point estimate. Okay, so in this uh, second uh, section of the whole course, we'll be learning on interval estimates. Okay, so what is interval estimate? Okay, we actually have uh, another word for interval estimate is confidence interval. Okay, so for the part of confidence interval, we have the, uh, the, the confidence value or we actually can put certain level of confidence in uh, estimation of uh, the population parameters that we have just now. Okay, so for example, in most of the time, in statistics, we are using either 90% level of confidence, 95% level of confidence, or even 99% level of confidence. Okay, so this is something interesting. Okay, why don't we have 100% level of confidence? Okay, right? Do you have anything in your mind related to this one? Okay, okay, alright. So now, it's just the maximum of 99% level of confidence, okay? So I need you to understand that we are actually trying to do an estimation. And when we are trying to do an estimation, of course, as human beings, we cannot be so sure of what we are trying to estimate. So the highest level of confidence interval that we can have is just around the value of 99%. Okay, so 100% is going to be impossible because when we say it is 100%, we are actually being so sure that the estimate that we have done is very accurate. Okay, so we reserve about 1% level of significance, which is level that we are not very sure. Okay, so what is the formula for a confidence interval? Okay, so this is going to be what we have for the first uh, part of the topic which is confidence interval for the population mean okay so just now we have said that the value of sorry the notation for population mean is mu okay so we are using we are using the sample value over here in order for us to estimate the population mean okay so what are the things that we use in the calculation we have x bar okay x bar is again our sample mean Right, we have also n, which is actually the number of samples that we have. And this one is something new to you, which is z distribution value. This is what we are going to get from the table of z. Right? And this is going to be sigma. Okay? Sigma is actually what we call as population standard deviation just now. So if we are having the size of sample which is bigger or equal to 30 okay the size of sample if if it is bigger or equal to 30 we'll be using z distribution okay we'll be using z distribution no matter whether we have sigma or we don't have the sigma value what is sigma again sigma is actually the population standard deviation okay so for the case of size of sample is small, which is n lesser than 30, okay, we have two different cases to be considered. One is sigma known, okay, so when the sigma value is known, we'll be using z distribution. But when the sigma is unknown, we'll be using t distribution. Okay, so that is the reason why we have two different formulas. One having z, the other one having t. And one is having sigma and the other one having s. Okay, so you can just uh, depends on the situation, which is the first thing first is to check the size of the sample, right? The size of the sample. So from the size of the sample, you can straight away decide whether to use z or t distribution. Okay, we go to the first formula first. Okay, mu equals to x bar plus minus z sigma over square root of n. 
Okay, this place of sigma, most of the time we are not having what we call as the population parameters. Normally, what we have is just the sample uh, statistics, which is when the size of the sample is large enough, we can just consider to replace the place of sigma as S, which is a sample standard deviation. So, for the first formula of Z, we can either put the value of sigma here can also be SS, which is sample standard deviation. Okay, if you are having the sigma value, which is the population standard deviation, then you can straightway use that value. But if you don't have any, you can just assume that we estimate, we are using the point estimate of S to replace the value of sigma. Right? Now we are going to continue with the part of Z. Okay, just now we said that in the formula we have X bar plus minus Z sigma over square root of N. And this value of sigma is actually the place where we are going to change the values depending on the level of significance that we choose. Okay, just now we said that this formula or this interval estimate can also be known as confidence interval. So when you want to put the level of confidence into your calculation, so that will be related to the value of Z that you will be using. Okay. So for example, if you are saying that you are using 90% level of significance, sorry, level of confidence, 90% level of confidence, your value of Z will be Z equals to 1.61. But if you are using 95% level of significance, sorry again, level of confidence, 1.96, the value of Z that will be using is 1.96. And the third one is 99%. And in, if you are using 99% level of confidence, your value of Z will be 7, sorry, 2.58. So you can see that the value become bigger and bigger, which is getting uh, higher and higher when the value of level of significance is higher. Okay? So let's just imagine that we have done some calculation related to the formula that we have here. And after we uh, substitute all the value of x bar, z, sigma, and n, depending on the case of uh, level of confidence that we have already choose, this will be the pattern, will be the example of pattern of uh, mu that we can get from our calculation. Remember, our formula is about the population parameter, which is population mean. So at the end of the session, when you have already calculated all this, you'll be having something like this, okay? So why do we have the comma in between? Okay, this is actually to show that it's, it is actually an interval. This is going to be the minimum value and that is going to be the maximum value, okay? And it is supposed to be in a bracket. That is the way of writing an interval. One of the ways to write our interval is by having the bracket and in between we have the comma, right? So let us look at these intervals that we have. Okay, this is 90%, this is 95%, and 99%. Look at the values. Okay, right? So if we try to draw the distance between uh, the minimum point and the maximum point of the interval, you can see that when we have bigger value of significant, uh, sorry, bigger value of confidence, bigger value of level of confidence, they are going to have a bigger interval. Okay? So, yes, most of the people say that why don't we straight away go to a higher level of confidence. Okay? So, when you get a higher level of confidence, of course, your interval will be a bigger one. So, it will be slightly difficult for you to actually uh, what we call as uh, estimate the right position of your value of the population mean. Okay, so uh, there are pro and cons of using a smaller value of uh, level of confidence and higher value of level of confidence. Of course, when you have a smaller value of level of confidence, you can see that your value of the interval, the minimum and the maximum point are just around a small place. I mean, the distance will be not that far. Okay, so we 
easier for you to understand your population value. Okay, what is the place of your uh, your population value? Will be easier because you can just uh, see that it is between 90 to 91. 90 to 91. So your population value, which means that your population uh, value for the mean will be just around that corner. But if you are having a bigger value of level of uh, confidence, you can see that we have between 87 to 94. Okay, 87 to 94. So it's bigger compared to the smaller interval here. Now we are going to see one example related to confidence interval for the population mean. Confidence interval for the population mean. Okay. So now we will see the illustration given in the module. Okay. So you can refer to the illustration number 2. Illustration number 2. Okay. The question is, random sample of 59 students spend an average of 273 ringgit and 20 cent for textbooks. Sample standard deviation was 94.4, which is 94 ringgit and uh, 40 cent. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean of the population mean. Okay, so now you need to see the important points to highlight. Okay, we have 59 students. So that is our sample, random sample of 59 students. Average of 273.20. Standard deviation of 94.4, which is sample standard deviation. Stated clearly here is sample standard deviation. And we need to construct a 95% confidence interval. Okay, so now by looking at the value of 95% confidence interval, so the value that we are using for Z would be 1.96. Okay, this value of 1.96 is actually the value that we are going to get from the Z table, which is Z distribution table. Okay, so this is going to be given. Right, next is going to be the formula itself. Okay, so look at the formula. The place of S, sorry, the place of sigma before this, which is the sample... It's supposed to be sigma is supposed to be the population standard deviation, population standard deviation. But now, because of we are given only the sample standard deviation, okay, and the size of the sample, size of the sample is large enough, which is bigger or equal to 30. We have 59 now, so we can just replace, which is we actually use the point estimate of the sigma, which is the population mean. Sigma, we estimate by using the value of S. Okay, so UE just replace the value of sigma over here by the value of S, sample standard deviation. So after you substitute all the values uh, that we have here, we are going to have this kind of an interval. Okay, okay we have the interval of between 249.11 and 297.29. Okay, so how do we interpret this uh, confidence interval that we get? Okay, so the way to interpret the confidence interval will be something like I am 95% confident that uh, the average all the students spend for textbooks, the average all the students spend for textbooks is between Ringgit Malaysia 249.11 okay, and 297.29 okay, The meaning is that we are about 95% uh, confident that the population mean okay, is between this value That is the meaning of the interpretation just now okay, so when we use the word population mean, that is very general. That is actually not really explaining the scenario given to us. So try to understand the scenario given to us just now. It's about the average student span for textbooks. But we have only 59 students. Okay, That is actually the random sample of the whole students that we have for, the, for a particular college or maybe a particular semester. So we do not know but... Uh, we have a population to explain, okay? but we have only uh, 59 samples to represent the whole population. So by using the 59 samples, uh, uh, what we call as data, by using 59 samples data, uh, 
we actually try to estimate the population mean. Okay, population is about the whole thing. Population is about the whole students that we are talking about. Okay, all right. So that is the way to interpret our value of confidence.